All right, let's talk compositing. So when I rendered out all my EXRs, I have a folder in my project folder called renders. I don't really use all the folders that Maya will kick out. I think that's just too convoluted and too heavy. And I, I like to be in control of my own project. So I have my own renders folder, double clicking on that. And it's just separated out into the sequential frame sequences that I'm using for this project. Here's my background elements. And of course, they're all EXRs with the proper frame. I'm starting at 240 for this shot instead of one or zero. Uh, so this is my background elements, Embergen smoke. Uh, and different smoke plumes. I brought in my camera to Embergen, which is a really fantastic real-time fluid simulator that we don't have time to get into, but I kicked out some distant smoke plumes. And I'll tell you the reasons why I, I brought it into a, an, a fluid sim instead of just using stock footage of smoke instead and see the advantages of that. But I'll talk about that later. All the ground shadow is separated out because that's got to be placed, of course, on the background footage. Hero smoke. Whenever I say hero, I'm talking about the main actor. The main thing in the scene, you know, something that's really close to the camera. So that one of those skeletons that you're going to focus in on on the shot, uh, I thought I'd add like a little fun green smoke nuclear, you know, problem with that dude. And so I considered him the hero element and I wanted him to be a little smoky. So I added smoke to him in again in Ember Gen. We'll show you that later on. You don't have to do you don't have to use Ember Gen or any of that sort of stuff. There's the separate police lights in there. And then I realized that I need some illumination on the ground for the police lights. So I made a separate folder for that in there. Uh, the main skeleton render. And then this smoke here, I actually forget what the heck that is for, but we'll find out in the comp, right? So a couple of things you really want to be aware of when you're, when you're compositing in After Effects versus Nuke. And I'm going to show you that right now with basically the skeleton EXR. And the last frame of my skeleton is 535 right over here. So I'm just going to play with that one file. And I want to show you there's a couple settings in uh, After Effects that you really need to set. Nuke does it automatically. But if you don't set these settings in After Effects when you're doing multi-channel compositing, or more specifically, when you're doing compositing with a higher bit rate, like EXRs, 32 or 16-bit EXRs, you're going to find that you're having trouble seeing the artwork. For some reason, it's just not showing up. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, so again, right over here, I have After Effects. Right over here, I have Nuke. And we're just going to analyze and take a look at one EXR, how to break it out, and make sure the settings are proper for what we're looking for. So again, in my skeleton render, don't bring in the whole thing. You just render, just bring in one thing, one render that you need. I'm going to bring in the last skeleton part, and I'm just going to drag it right over here into After Effects. So there he is there, and I'm going to drag the same frame right over here into Nuke. Okay, cool. And let's take a look at each one. So. I'm going to make a new composition in After Effects. It's going to be 1920, 1080. I'm going to set it to 24 FPS, frames per second, and maybe 500 frames to start. I could always change that later on. Everything's looking good. And just say OK to that. New comp is ready to go. Over here, I'm just going to put my viewer on that last frame of my render to see that fella. And then, of course, right over here, let's actually add our skeleton EXR to our composition. There we go. Okay, so basically one-to-one, -one, After Effects Nuke. Sounds good. But, like I said, we kicked out all of our stuff as multi-channel EXRs, right? So let's actually shuffle out some of this stuff, and then I'll show you some of the settings you have to, to plug in here. So the simplest way to actually get some of those multi-channel EXRs, we, if we render everything out to multi-channel EXR, but then only work with basically the beauty pass, which is what we're seeing right here, our RGBA, then we're basically destroying the whole opportunity we have to break this thing out into its smaller components, like we just said, and work with those smaller components to build a different kind of render, right? Now, of course, some people might say, well, wait a minute, Dante, if I start playing around with the different specularity of this guy versus the subsurface scatter versus all the different pieces, and I start playing around with that, it basically destroys the physical accuracy of that shading model because now I'm tweaking all the little controls inside of it. I'm negating PBR workflow, right? You've heard that physical based rendering workflow. Yeah, you are. But so what? Who cares? We're doing what looks cool. We're, do we're not doing what looks accurate. So if I wanted to look at the bounce passes over here in Nuke, I'm just going to hit tab and I'm going to add a shuffle node. Start typing shuffle. There he is right there. 
Cool. And if I zoom in on this, I'm going to plug the B right into my, my node here. And I'm not going to go through building all of this because that would require an entire nuke course, but I'm just going to show you the building blocks and then you could kind of continue on on your own. But in this shuffle node right over here, I'm going to open this up so it looks a little bigger. Pretend I only wanted to access the indirect lighting pass, which is basically in this shot, it would basically only be the lighting, the indirect lighting from the second bounce, maybe the bounce that's hitting the floor and then bouncing back up or the, or the diffuse lighting from the sky of the HDRI dome hitting our little character here. Anything but the direct spotlight contribution on that first bounce, right? Okay, so right over here, all I have to do to access that is in the B channel right up here where it says RGBA, I'm gonna open up and guess what? There are all my passes that I created in Maya, right? In the AOV tab of the global renders, right? So I'm just gonna say this is the indirect, just like that. Indirect to RGBA, out to RGBA, right? I'm gonna shrink that in a little bit. And maybe I'm also, what I also like to do is go over to the node tab of that shuffle node and I label it so I know what pass that is. That's indirect, and now it says indirect right down there. And I also like to turn on posted stamp. So it basically shows me, like, it basically you're creating another read node. I'm going to put my viewer on that guy right there. And as you can see, he's pretty dark, but that's because the indirect contribution isn't very strong, okay? And if I gamma slam up a little bit, just a little bit, you'll see there is that indirect pass looking good, right? It's subtle but it's there and we can rebuild the whole thing um, with all the passes put back together using plus for the lights and multiply for the shadows to get our render back so there it is right there there's our indirect and we just shuffled it out and now we can work with it in nuke whoops i disconnected it there we go just like that by the way i shook it if you shake something in nuke it'll disconnect so be <laughs> don't shake your nodes okay so there we go there's that guy so let's do the same thing over here in after effects we have our EXR, but there's no shuffle to shuffle out these things. But there is an effect you can use to break out multi-channel EXR files, right? And if I go right up here to effect, scroll down to 3D channel, which is a weird place to put it. Don't ask me why they put it in 3D channel. I think it should probably be in just channels, but whatever. 3D channel, there's something called extractor. And if you notice the capital letters, E, X, R in the word extractor. So you get it? It's a little pun. Extractor. Extract EXR channels. It used to be a plugin that you'd have to download for After Effects, but now I guess they finally bought it and they included it in After Effects. It's right there. Extractor. I'm going to click on that. And once I'm in the effects tab right over here of our ish extractor effect, I can click on layers right over here. And guess what? That's all the stuff that we just saw in Maya and all the stuff that we just saw in Nuke, right? So once I clicked on indirect, just like that, you may notice something. You're saying, where is my skeleton? Even if I gamma slam up, and let's try and gamma slam this guy a little bit. I'm going to go back over to my skeleton and you can go right up here to effect and choose color correction, exposure, and it's kind of a slow way to gamma slam, but I can bring my exposure way up, way up, and there he is. But look what's happening here. Something is wrong. I gamma slam this thing way up with an exposure effect, but it's changing the way this guy looks. And it's also not very handy to keep adding effects like exposure effects to all my layers and then move these effects way up, like, like 12 and 13, to see this thing on top of the fact that look at what it's doing to it. It's not really making the pixels accurate. It's all, it's really blown out and it's super saturated and it's noisy and it's kind of a mess. And we don't want that. We want it to look like this guy. This is the nice subtle uh, fella here in rendered in 16 bit. And this, I don't know what this is, but we can fix that in our next video. Stay tuned.